Okay. All right, we're here with the York yes. Hall Football Post Game Show. Uh, we're joined now by the. Or not. We're good. Okay. Half of us is good. He's talking to Katie right now. All right, here on Facebook Live with the York Hall football game post game show, we're joined by the winning head coach Merrill Hodge. Twenty to nothing was the score in this game, and uh, coach, it, it seemed like when Brian Bennett came in as a quarterback, things just changed for the game for your team. What do you see? Yeah, well, you know, like it's to Brian's credit, you know, at the beginning of the week, I challenged our quarterbacks that they were going to compete, and they'd tell us who's going to start. And really, the Brian and Tommy played well during practice this week and that's why we wanted to play them both and then we let the game speak to us mm -hmm. and um, you know when Brian got in there he made things happen you know we made some critical throws critical runs and uh, listen I played enough to know it you got to play and once you get in a rhythm you don't want to get robbed of that rhythm so you know we let the game speak to us and that's why we kept kept him in there and he, and he did a great job played his guts out and competed the entire night Two rushing touchdowns for him, a rushing touchdown for Divine Redding. Um, obviously, the run game was working pretty well tonight. Why do you think it was? Because our offensive line, you know, they they always get forgotten. You know, you know, Brian's going to be here. You know, you could bring Divine in here, and, and we just can't overlook our offensive line. They've been uh, they've been undermanned, overlooked. Um, you know, the weak link, if you will, pointed out. And these guys, I said a couple weeks ago that they were the most improved group at one point and they continue to do that and they respond uh, consistently because there's some big holes too. Devine had some big holes. I don't know if Devine had 100 yards, but he, he had to have a close to 100 yards. Brian had close to 100 yards rushing. <laughs> to Brian too. So like, let's put it this way. As a team, we know we had over yes, 100. Yes. Okay, maybe maybe a buck 50, which is incredible. So it's, uh, but our guys up front did a heck of a job too with them. Um, you know, getting some holes and then Brian extending plays. Um, there's a the difference tonight. Yeah. Um, the fans calling the plays, we talk about it every time. You put your bundles together. You told us that you narrowed your bundles this week. Yep. Um, overall, you wanted a couple of plays called. Yep. You didn't see them called. Nope. How do you get them called in the third game? I have no idea. Here's how. Actually, I do know. I do not. Please, fans, do not call a Harry. If you see it, do not call it, because I think that's going to work now. Because when I begged for it, I didn't get it. So now don't call it. Don't ever. If I see it, you see Harry, just say, ah, I don't want to call it. Reverse that. psychology. That's what I'm going to try to do. So I'm going to hope it's going to work, because, listen, that's got touchdowns written all over it. If they would just at least call a Harry 1 and a Harry 2 and then a Harry 3. If we got those calls, there's a touchdown written all over it in the air. So hopefully they'll go to it. Last week, and this will be the last question, last week you talked about that end of the game, the swing of emotions, right? This week the game was kind of, you knew you had control of it mm -hmm. in that fourth quarter. But I don't know if you're aware of this, the leaderboard for the players playing at home on that final play swung. So the person in second place jumped into first place to win on the final play. So it's pretty incredible to see the game is out of hand on the field, right, but, but the players playing at home, it matters each and every play. So now, now I'm just guessing, since I'm not playing from a fan's perspective, that the guy in the lead or the girl in the lead probably picked the play that was called maybe, and then the second place person didn't. Something and that's oh, how yeah. it vaulted, because well, that's interesting. That's um. Well, good for them. Yeah, you know, it's good pretty for them. Cool. And, we, and listen, before we go, we can't forget to – they didn't score a point. And our defense has been unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they continue to play really good football. So it's pretty easy to coach when you got players like that, you know. 2-0, and one more game left, Coach. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next up we'll have Brian Bennett. Hey, Brian. How are you doing? Feels good to sit down. <laughs> I was going to ask because we talked about it on on the air. Your call football fans are calling the plays. Uh -huh. Usually you ride the hot hand. It wasn't your hand; it was your legs <laughs> that was that were hot tonight. So, at what point were you like, "Oh, please, just call a call a pass"? Hmm. Um, the, that point definitely came. <laughs> I go, "Oh, here we go again." But you know, it's working, and if it's working, I guess you know we got to keep calling it. Um, I do get tired a little bit, 
Not very often, but a little bit. <laughs> Just to let you know, your stats rushing, 11 carries, 68 yards, two touchdowns. You were 8 for 16, 130 yards passing with a two-point conversion. Yeah. Um, and to me, it looked like on that one two-point conversion, after one of your rushing touchdowns, you were like, okay, <laughs> I'm beat right now. Yeah, I was happy to see that pass come in. I was like, <laughs> all right. I definitely thought we were getting quarterback draw again. Um, but, you know, it, it was fun to be out there. Um, definitely want to get the passing game going a little bit more. But when we got a running game going like it is, Devine and JoJo doing a great job. And like Coach Haas said, our line, man, they, I, I was kept going up back in the huddle every time. It takes a little time to get the play in and just telling them, look, this is happening right now because of you guys. Mm -hmm. You know, they're pushing guys off the ball. When we did pass, they had a nice pocket. And, you know, that's where you win football games up front. So hats off to the line. Yeah. One, one last thing, I guess, for me is um, – the interviews after you score, it, it's so unique to your call football that yeah. you guys get interviewed right there along the sidelines, out of breath, winded, <laughs> doing the interview. What What is it like for a player to be doing that live in game? Um, definitely different. I haven't, I don't think I've ever done that before. Um, it's kind of cool though. Kind of like, I don't know, takes your mind off of, off of the game. Well, not, I guess not off the <laughs> game, but you know, you just kind of talk about just what, what happened and then you know, get a chance to get on to the next play. Any questions? Yeah, we do have a question from Twitter. Brian, first of all, congratulations on being the Adidas Impact Player of the Game. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from Curtis Carpenter. When you're running that quarterback draw or that read option, what are you looking for from the offensive line, and what were you seeing tonight that, that was so successful? Yeah, on the draw, um, you know, just trying to hit it downhill, try and get, uh, you know, those guys to push out the tackles and see if I can just hit it straight downhill and get up on the safety as fast as possible. And then uh, when we run the zone read, we're reading that outside backer, uh, not sorry, that defensive end. Um, and then, you know, if he crashes, we pull it down and then it's up to then our tackle to get up onto the linebacker, receivers to block on the perimeter, and then the rest is uh, up to me. The rest is history. Two rushing touchdowns for you, Brian. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you. All right, next up will be Katie Humphreys, starting quarterback for Team Grit. All right, Katie Humphreys now joining us. Katie, you started the game for Team Grit. Um, what what was your take in the first half from what you saw for, for your guys? Um, you know, we wanted to come out, you know, with a, with a little bit of fire under us. You know, we came out, you know, first drive, uh, we stalled. You know, um, defense came back and they got to stop, you know, and then, you know, we just couldn't get it rolling. You know, we just had some miscues, you know, on the offensive side of the ball. And, you know, early we can't have those problems. So, you know, um, we got some work to do. And, um, you know, th those, are, those are correctable things. You know, we're not going beat to our, beat ourselves in the ground. You know, um, we got one more week to go out here and compete. And um, I look forward to going out and competing next Thursday. I just saw something here. The camaraderie uh, right there. You said nice job to Brian. There, there, there seems to be like a mutual respect. Why, why is that? What is it about this your call football that there is that? I mean, it's it's been a it's been a long time. You know, uh, we've been here. You know, it feels like a long time. Yeah. You know, it's been five weeks. You know, um, man, it's just YCF your call football has been a brotherhood. You know, just bonding with these guys. You know, just guys from all over the country, and um, just coming to be a one. You know, because at the end of the day, man, this is the first year of um, your call football, and just meeting a lot of these guys in, in different situations. But in, at the end of the day, we're all in the same position. And um, you know, just just having the mutual respect for these guys. I mean, all of these guys are great competitors, and we just all want to see each other uh, get better each and every day. And then, uh, lastly, going into the third game of the season, the final game of the season. What do you think it is that your team needs to focus on to get that win? Um, this is our last week, you know, um, you know, either we tuck our tail or we come out, you know, fighting. And um, I wouldn't expect nothing less for um, Team Grit and um, Team Power for us both to come out, you know, with a little bit more energy and a little bit more being fired up, you know, this last upcoming week. All right. Katie, thanks so much. Thank Appreciate you. it. And that'll do it here for the post-game press conference here on Facebook Live. Don't forget the final game of the season is Thursday, next Thursday, May 17th, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Download the app, play along. There's a lot of money at stake. Don't forget about that.